Hi, so today we're going to talk about whether or not we should be talking about mental health stuff online, specifically stuff that includes advice or techniques and stuff like that. I actually don't know what I think about it, so that's why I'm bringing it to YouTube. And I hope that there'll be some interesting dialogue in the comments. Please let me know what you think about this video. And really, I'm just testing this idea to see if we can find some sort of answer, because I don't know. I'm really pulled in two ways about this. If it's unethical to share this stuff online because people think that that's enough, you know, that they suddenly understand a disorder because they've watched one video on it or even a hundred videos on it. I don't think that's fair. That's not possible. But on the other side, I think psychologists and the like shouldn't be withholding that information because it might be useful. It might just be interesting to people. So I don't really know what side I'm on. I'm going to explore my thoughts so far and hopefully that'll generate some conversation around it. Hi, I'm Marios, by the way. Uh, I'm a counselling psychology doctoral student living in London. And on this channel, we talk about psychology, mental health, and anything I think you might find interesting or useful. Hope you stick around. So I'll start with the arguments why we shouldn't, because I had an exchange on Twitter with someone who is more experienced, you know, in terms of their clinical work, you know, been a psychotherapist for much longer than I've been on my journey, because I'm still training, I'm still at doctoral level. so don't have the accreditation yet. They were talking about TikTok, so they might have been specifically talking about TikTok. They tend to be one minute videos. And they said, there's nothing useful I could share in that. There's more risk than there is potential benefit from reducing an idea to one minute. He said he couldn't think of a single thing. And I was like, you couldn't think of a single thing? Maybe I should rethink my whole <laughs> strategy or like willingness to put stuff on the internet because that sounded way more extreme than I thought anyone would say. If it's just a minute, then I guess, yeah, it makes sense. There's not going to be that many things that are useful from a psychological perspective to share, just as there wouldn't be for any other field, science or math. It would be a quick sugary hit, but to make an actual cohesive idea that connects to your existing knowledge and also builds on it in a way that's going to be useful for you long term, a TikTok's probably not going to cut it, unfortunately, even though they feel interesting and maybe they said just the right thing that made you feel good. The temptation is that people will think, oh, I keep watching these videos from a therapist on TikTok and I think I know how to deal with my OCD or that I have OCD and I know that now and I didn't go to a therapist. That's never going to be useful. I get that element. Right. But then to throw the baby out with the bathwater by saying, I don't have anything to say for the Internet. I don't have anything useful to say in a minute. I don't know. I think it is possible. Like, sure, things are going to be simplified and condensed in a way that means you're losing context and resolution. But that's the case anywhere. Like you're not always able to people are not going to always read a whole article, whole chapter of a book, whole book or do a whole course on a topic. So to say that you are going to keep those behind the gates of the appropriate amount of detail, such as a book, in order to safeguard people from not just digesting small amounts of information that are not going to be the whole picture, well, then you're not going to release basically anything. Like You should be able to whet people's appetite with regards to the topic, hopefully provide them enough information to make them want to learn more, and then hopefully they'll learn more. Yes, some people will just watch the one minute TikTok and then not come back to it and think they know something. Unfortunately, we see that everywhere, right? How many times have you read an article and thought this title was a bit, you know, it's really egging it or it wasn't even that relevant because they wanted it was clickbait, right? So of course, that's a huge risk, but we do it all the time. So I would say if you're going to do it, then at least create with integrity and be part of the solution rather than abstaining because there will be people who abuse the system. And I see it all the time, creating content on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and they are even people who are qualified, let's say, appear qualified, saying things that are incredibly reductive, really overstating the point and almost making promises. I'd really say some of them just, if you are this, then this is three proven things that will help. And it's just like, really? Like without any more context, that is completely antithetical to having a psychological approach to helping people because you need to understand their psychology, their way of being, their way of looking at the world, their way of understanding their experience. If you do say you have to say it with the, a preface, you know, if you experience this, some of the clinically proven methods that work are X, Y, Z, but these will not work without the support of a qualified professional, for example. But I guess people are not willing to go into that level of detail when it comes to producing content because they just want loads of people to watch, loads of hits, 
they want people to agree with it, press the like button and then ding, ding, like that's it. More subscribers, more clout. And that's it. That's all they want. And of course, it just means more money for them is the ultimate goal, unfortunately. So I guess going into the reasons why you should, for me, I came to psychology later on in life, even though I always wanted to study it. I think if I paid attention to myself and listened to myself, I would have known. Anyway, it was good in other ways that I waited this long. If I was younger, living in today's day and age, I think I would be following a lot of people online who are in this industry and try to understand what it's like for them to work as a psychologist or a therapist, then that would give me an idea about my journey now training as a counseling psychologist. And it would have made me more interested to be able to support people who are creating content in this area, talk about their own experiences as therapists, and also talking about their areas of expertise. I hope I wouldn't just watch the short-term content that's the quick fix, the sugary stuff, and go into it a lot more deeply, but I would hope that that, that they wouldn't avoid the short form areas just because they think, oh, you need to come straight to the source. Because I just think that's unrealistic. Like we all live in social media like a lot. So it's kind of like you can abstain from being part of it at all, or you can try and do it in the best way possible and add the caveats that you need to in order to be safe and actually not overstate points, not just give people the hits that they want to give you a like and make them think they understand a topic that they don't understand as long as you get a follower and a like. Like, that's tacky. It's a bad way of working. Yeah, but to just completely say, well, there's never going to be an instance that it's going to be worth it because, so the phrase he used on Twitter was psychology window shopping. And look, the guy has many years over me <laughs> in terms of his experience. So I'm sure he gets an incredible amount more about this topic than I do. So I hope that I'm being clear about my own limitations here. But I just don't know why I need to not be doing it at all or that we should be absent from these platforms in that way because we cannot add enough context. It's like, to be honest, even in the conversation in a room with a client, sometimes you don't get the time to add the context every time. You can make time in the next session. You can make sure you say, by the way, I introduced this quickly, but you know, there's a lot more we should explore around this and especially how you're experiencing this. I think that's totally possible in your online content. Another problem is, and I know this as someone who has very humble following, I'm very grateful for it, but I'm very early on in this journey of having an audience online. And I know that there is a huge temptation to just get people in and like it's hard enough making content but also making it in a way that's ethical and responsible and has all the warnings in and makes sure that you're very honest about your limitations and stuff it's like it's a lot of work okay so i want to be willing to do that and i hope i am doing that but when you're fighting against people who are getting loads of followers by saying whatever the hell they're thinking honestly and as long as they say it in a really authoritative tone and certain pace and with the you might write captions and with the right effects zooming in and out like they're going to get the followers it does become a bit disheartening and then on the other side you have the people who are practicing ethically and who are giving the right context when they need to are saying oh no those platforms are totally inappropriate i feel like i'm in a really awkward middle position of like guys i, I wish i could bring some of the ethical people in to want to produce stuff if they have enough energy to start like actually talking about the right way of working and then hopefully showing the audience hey don't be fooled by people who are just good at marketing good at social media because they are just finding the ways to tap into your quick fix mindset. And, like, and I will absolutely make a video about this. Quick set mindset is the one of the worst tragedies of the current way people think. And I've had it. I probably do still have it to a certain degree. No, certainly to not even just a certain degree, a substantial degree. It's a mental virus, honestly. It's like this idea that putting in the work can be solved by finding the right summary, quick and accessible, quick tips. Just give me the actions. I'll go and do it. I'll tick the box. I'll put it in my workout routine, whatever the hell. Like putting in the work doesn't look like that. Quick fixes are not real. If someone's trying to sell you a quick fix, it better be about something, you know, practical, like, I don't know, restarting your computer and getting it to work again. Fine, like that can work. But when it comes to psychology and mental health, I'm sorry, it does not exist. 
nor should it exist. I don't think you will really learn anything about being capable, about being able to address future problems by having a quick fix. And it would also make everything incredibly mundane in a way. It's not that way, so we shouldn't even think about it like that. But the fact that you need to transcend problems in your own life in a way that requires work is what is character building, right? So if you have a quick fix, even if you can find a book of quick fixes for mental health, I don't think you'll be a more interesting or capable or rich and a person with a meaningful life. Like you just really wouldn't be building anything. You're, you're trying to cover up. You can try to patch up a wound, but you're not really working on the process of healing in a way that's sustainable, building your immune system, just to carry on with that metaphor. That requires time and it does require context and it requires work and it requires support, proper support. So that's why I say in all my videos, social media is not a replacement for therapy because it isn't. And you might have reservations about therapy, that's fine. I'd like, I think that's a worthy conversation too, but engage in that conversation. You know, don't just dismiss it. It doesn't work because it didn't work for me or look at this person, they don't need therapy. If they don't, I don't. You don't know what happens with them behind closed doors. They're not expressing everything that has been troubling them. They might say that they've got it all together, but you don't know how they're coping properly. You're not inside their mind. So I hope that you give therapy a try if you feel like it's relevant for you. And also don't give up the first time. Every therapist is different, their approaches are different, and you know it's as much a human connection as any other and not everyone gets along naturally. So you have to find someone you're working, you're working with someone. You, so you wouldn't expect to work with a lawyer that you're gonna work with for a year or two years and expect the first person to be perfect. And you like the way they work, you like the way they treat you, the way they think, etc. You should do it in a way where you're like, I feel comfortable with you, I trust you. I wanna work with you. That's the kind of thing you're doing with a therapist. Of course, it's very different to working with a lawyer, but the principle is the same. The way you're engaging with them, the way you feel around them does matter. And you shouldn't jump into it thinking anyone with the title is capable of helping you because that's not the case. And it doesn't mean that you should give up. You should keep trying until you find someone appropriate. Okay, that feels like a natural end to it. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time. Look after yourself.